What's up, everyone? Welcome to the October 18th edition of FanDuel NBA Tournament Plays presented by BetMGM. I'm your host, Adam Scherer. You can follow me on Twitter at ShipMyMoneyDFS. And if you are a new BetMGM user, easy way to make $200. All you have to do, click the link below, bet $10 on any Moneyline bet. BetMGM will give you $200 if either team in that game hits a three-pointer. It's about as easy as it can be. Um, pretty difficult to find money freer than that. Bet $10, win $200. This offer is not available for residents of Pennsylvania, New York, Mississippi, or Ontario. But if you live somewhere other than those places and you have access to BetMGM, be sure to click the link below. Take advantage. Basically a free $200 on your $10 bet. Now, we are going to take a look at three of the top tournament options for FanDuel, as we've done in some other sports. Tonight's opening night of NBA. We're going to be doing these all season long. So looking at the top three tournament options on FanDuel using the Boom Bust tool on the Stochastic.com site. Number three, Tobias Harris, projected for 36% ownership with a 42% chance of being in the optimal lineup. Harris has small forward and power forward eligibility at $6,600. He averaged only 0.82 FanDuel points per minute in the games that he played with James Harden and Joel Embiid last year. He had about a 17.9% usage rate, which is lower than we would like as well, but he still averaged about 34 minutes per game, and I expect similar playing time from him tonight. He is just going a little bit under-owned for that amount of playing time at this salary, even when you factor in that he does have to share the ball now with James Harden and Joel Embiid. Number two, Jason Tatum, 41% chance of being, uh, sorry, 41% ownership, 44% chance of being in the optimal lineup. Tatum has small forward and power forward eligibility at $9,800. Tatum averaged 1.24 FanDuel points per minute in the games that he played with Jalen Brown last year. He had a 31.7% usage rate. 21.7% assist percentage, about a 12% rebounding percentage. So getting it done in all categories, and he averaged about 36 minutes per game. It wouldn't be surprising to see him playing that right out of the gate here. So even though he is popular, he does look to be going a little bit under-owned. And number one, Patrick Beverly, projected for 50% ownership, but with a 62% chance of being in the optimal lineup. Beverly has point guard and shooting guard eligibility, so there's four roster spots that you can lock him into. He's only $4,900, and this is, of course, his first year with the Lakers, so we don't know exactly how he's going to fit in alongside LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Russell Westbrook. We also don't know exactly what the Lakers rotations are going to look like, but I'm expecting that we get around 26 to 28 minutes from Beverly, and while there's no perfect way to approximate his production you can go back to last year he played 676 minutes where all three of carl anthony towns d'angelo russell and anthony edwards were on the floor so three high usage guys uh three ball dominant guys that's a decent proxy for i think what you're going to be getting in a lot of these minutes uh for beverly with the lakers he's not going to be relied on to create a ton he's not going to be relied on for a lot offensively but he is still going to be on the floor enough to pick up some defensive stats, which you know are really valuable on FanDuel. And also, you know, just to knock down open shots when he gets them. In those 676 minutes last year, alongside Towns, Edwards, and Russell, he still averaged 0.9 FanDuel points per minute. So to recap, the top three tournament plays on FanDuel, number three, Tobias Harris, number two, Jason Tatum, and number one, Patrick Beverly.